Hello, people. Just waiting for my technology to show me that I'm, in fact, online for a moment. And checking my audio settings here. Looks like uh, looks like everything's running. Um, let me know if you can hear me. I'm so happy to be back on Starseed Mission Support again. Clearly, I just missed out last week. I <laughs> Realize it was Saturday. Uh, so hang on one second here. We're going to get started in a couple of minutes. I can hear you, Mom. <laughs> um, So I'm just going to share this video here. Give me one moment. Guys, I, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> it's just, I like, can hear it, so it's distracting. <laughs> no, it's because you're, you're playing the sound. And I can hear it. <laughs> All right. So. <laughs> All right. Um, so give me one minute. We're just going to get started here. I'm going to share this video on my YouTube. Um, I mean, on my Facebook page. And. Yeah, welcome. We're so excited to have this conversation today. I was asked several times over the last couple of weeks about this very unique situation um, where, you know, in the New Age community, somebody will be quite popular. They will have maybe even created a lot of uh, foundational teachings and products and all sorts of stuff. And then out of nowhere, you know, as somebody who is a founding pillar of the community, they will just kind of jump ship and go back to following Jesus or something like that. And so today we're going to explore, you know, why that happens and what I think about it, because it's truly actually not a really simple situation, right? Um, copy link. So... Uh, just give me one second here. I don't have my audio stuff set up today, so I'm not going to do any singing. I usually just wait a couple minutes for the people to come on. So welcome. Welcome to the space. Hi, Ava. I knew you weren't going to miss a conversation about Jesus. <laughs> so just sit back, maybe grab a cup of tea. We're going to get started in just a couple of minutes. And... We are, here we go, close, okay. So yeah, definitely want to start off by saying I love Jesus as well. <laughs> um, there are so many dimensions to this spiritual journey that, you know, I feel like I'm very lucky that I didn't really access or get Mm, I would say the majority of my thought processes and understandings from any external source. Um, I know that, uh, in a second, I usually have to block the chat because it is distracting. Um, yeah, so recently I had this comment on my YouTube channel and they were saying like, you know, if you are, you know, here to be a portal for our sacred knowledge, like, shouldn't it all be free? Shouldn't you just be giving away all of your information? And actually, I really do. I actually <laughs> give away most of my teachings um, on on YouTube. So if you can't, you know, join any of my groups or whatever, you can still find what you need. But that's not even the point is that, you know, I really didn't follow anyone. I feel like the whole point of our journey is you know, really following the key signal of awakening, which is something that we're going to talk about today. The key signal of awakening is this desire for us to experience love and to connect. Sorry, I'm <laughs> just I can't focus. 
Yeah, no, it's okay. Um, yeah, my family's over. I have a baby shower tomorrow, so <laughs> we're just dealing with this today. We have people all over the place. They love me and they want to talk to each other. So what can we do? Um, yeah, and I also want to say real quick that this is probably going to be the second last Starseed mission support before Z goes on maternity leave. I don't know how long I'm going to be gone, but um, I'm due relatively soon, and I'm steadily, steadily getting more and more kind of, uh, those of you that have given birth might know that, you know, as you're getting close to crossing a soul over the veil and to the other side, that consciousness just gets very expanded and it's very it's been very difficult for me to keep up with um computer tasks and all the things that I regularly do and so um I've decided to just really give myself all the time and space that I uh, can have during this special time just to be with Kara and be with my family and just create the optimal space to bring this very special soul into this world. I'll definitely be reporting on this process because many of you know that I'm very guided through uh, the situation. I have a lot of deep feelings about this being. I mean, I don't really know too many babies that have, you know, 400 students before they're even born. Those women that have joined my womb healing class, they have been receiving direct transmission from Kara and our ascended ancestors. And I mean, I have not really seen the kind of magic that has unfolded in any of my other medicine containers. I know that the power is coming from this being, this baby. And I know that there's so many very special and advanced beings that are crossing into this world from, you know, recent times and into the future. And so I will definitely be sharing about my experience uh, crossing her over. This process has basically began um, a month ago, but the vibrations of working with Kara is really actually what brought me a really deep understanding of the path of ascended mastery. And when I began to unpack, you know, what these ascended masters truly know and understand about our existence, about the human destiny about human genetics and what humanity was always meant and destined to become um, it puts great context around everything else that um, exists and occurs in the new age community and so it's from this perspective that i felt like it is really important for us to have this conversation today because this conversation about true ascending mastery which is the path that I believe any spiritual person is on. So I think that's where we're going to start. We're going to start by just exploring what the spiritual path actually is. And I want to preface this by saying that I am absolutely not an ultimate authority on anything. Everything that I'm going to bring in today is just really for our discussion. I'm going to bring in some perspectives, some ideas that I have some things that I think when I see these things occur and the feelings that I generally uh, get aroused, the feelings that I generally feel when I witness um, certain situations and certain um, relationships that people have with Ascended Masters, particularly in the New Age community. And then what I'm hoping that will do is it will inspire for you to explore your own relationship with yourself and your spiritual path and to really assess, you know, why it is that we are participating in this spiritual community. If if uh, the reason that we're participating in it and what we're getting out of it are aligned and or if we're just kind of participating because it seems like is the only variation out there. And so we're not even getting to the core essence of what we're looking for. So obviously, I think that the new age spiritual community, let's first just define that. Um, I feel like it has a very specific frequency. When I think about it, I think, you know, those gift shops in Mount Shasta, I think talks about Ascended Masters and their appearance in tarot cards. And I think about, you know, crystals and the use of crystals and this kind of um, curiosity towards spiritual things and metaphysical things. And sometimes it can be even sensational and sometimes it can be a little bit materialistic. But ultimately, I feel like it almost focuses on the um, amusement of 
spirituality for the sake of it um, being a commodity that we engage in. And I feel like for the most part, this is um, kind of the foundations of new age spirituality. I feel like the reason why people are so attracted by it is because we've been starved of connecting to spirit our entire life. We were born into a society that has castrated humanity from spirit. We have denounced spirit in the society. It was all by design, right? Our society was designed to capture humanity inside of a false matrix soul prison, which we often talk about. And so being the naturally spiritual beings that we are, meaning all, all humans, <laughs> When humans are healthy, when humans are existing naturally, we are naturally spiritual because we are a spirit in a body. So there's no way that we cannot be spiritual, right? This is my perspective. So I feel like because we're naturally spiritual beings and we're born into this world that is, you know, void of all true spirituality, many of us are starving for anything that is beyond the 3D. And this is why the new age is so tricky because, you know, it's really built to, it's like junk food when you're really hungry and you, your body is really hungry and you um, grab a bag of chips and you eat this junk food and it tricks your body for a moment to feel like it's getting nourishment, but actually it's not really getting any nutrients. It's just getting fillers, right? It's exactly like that where because your being is so hungry for anything beyond this world on the other side of the veil, anything spiritual at all, that any little tidbits of spiritual anything we kind of grasp onto and it becomes um, something that nourishes us on some level, just like junk food, right? And so I feel like for the most part, that is why the new age is designed the way it is. It's really like a fishing net. Because when people are waking up and they're seeking for something beyond themselves and they're seeking for something spiritual, they will find most of the time they'll bump right into the walls of the new age community. They will find spiritual conventions and channeling and crystals and Mount Shasta. And by the way, I love Mount Shasta. Mount Shasta is my homie. Um, Mount Shasta, the goddess mountain stargate that she is, is immaculate. And when I speak of Mount Shasta, I mean like certain cultures around Mount Shasta, particularly, you know, the materialistic aspects of it and the fallen, false ascended masters aspects of it as well. And we're going to start to discern these two uh, vibrations and we're going to talk about um, how we can engage in the path of ascending mastery through aligning with the right energies inside of ourself. And so going back to this talk about the new age glass ceiling, which is essential because most of our information is coming from a fragmented layer of this glass ceiling. Unless we are engaging from a very devoted and pure place inside of us, and <laughs> It's kind of difficult, right? This is because we've never learned about self-inquiry in our world. We were never taught how to be honest with ourselves and how to look deeply inside of ourselves for the reasons why we do things. We don't really assess, you know, we, we, we have accepted that the subconscious is 90% of our consciousness, which is what the false matrix teaches us. And so we've just normalized not understanding and not knowing ourselves. And if you look into any of the ancient mystery schools, you'll find know thyself being a pillar of all of the teachings. Why is that? Because there's so many layers. There are so many dimensions to this phrase, know thyself, that when you truly know all of the dimensionalities of yourself, all the way back to the fact that you are um, a fractal emanation of source, then, you know, that is the kind of foundation that allows for us to embody our full uh, beingness. And so I believe that in many of the ascended galactic civilizations, teachings around knowing ourselves, meditation, self-inquiry, all of these things are taught in elementary school, right? First grade, instead of trying to teach us all these things about numbers, and reading and all the things, we get taught how to be a good human and how to cultivate positive human virtues. 
and how to live in an aligned way and how to be kind and how to you know really live a life that is full of purpose and full of meaning and all of those beautiful things. And because we didn't grow up in a society which taught those things in our schools, we were uh, basically missing data in our personality and our human self. And so now we have a society full of people that are hungry for spirituality, that really have no awareness of ourself and how to explore ourself and why we do things and why we're interested in things and why we're even looking for things outside of ourself. Um, and we have this um, very deliberately placed um, system, community, a lot of these teachings in the new age community, a lot of channelings about 5D and these things do come from CIA frequency waves. Um, they are able to transmit certain frequencies and channels can actually pick those up and believe that they're in fact channeling archangels and ascended masters. And this is where you get a lot of <laughs> this very specific layer, this frequency fence. Um, and a lot of these teachings, these books come from this frequency wave um, of people that are really believing that they are tuned into something, that they are channeling something, and then they're perpetuating and creating this entire culture that is meant to be a fishnet. Okay? That's meant to be a fishnet because this whole false matrix exists when humanity cannot remember who we really are. And now if there's going to be a great awakening, then we're going to have to figure out a way to capture the people that are awakening and completely stunt their process before they actually find themselves, find their complete connection back into self, back into ultimate connection, right? All the way through all dimensionalities, all the way back to source. And so this is the tricky part where obviously then we'll have people who are participating in new age who might wake up one day and realize that they have been participating in a deception right because when we grow up inside of the false matrix there's just so many levels of our being that are fragmented and we've never been trained to engage in actual self-healing work through multi-dimensionality through all the different layers of our light bodies and so when we're in that fragmented place, um, we're, it's very easy for us to be deceived by various frequencies because we just don't have the abilities to discern between what is, like say you, you are just in bed one day and you feel Archangel Michael is standing there and Archangel Michael is telling you, you know, oh, you can now channel me. Um, we're here to save the world. Obviously, you're going to be like, oh, my God, you know, this is so cool. Like, I get to channel Archangel Michael. And, like, because I'm a star seed and I know that I'm here on this planet to do something special, it's very easy for someone at that stage of the spiritual journey to get hijacked, right? But then because those people actually do have a higher trajectory, they do have a soul's destiny, they do have an innate core crystal to resonate in a certain vibration to actually be on mission that at some point that deception will start to fall apart and so this is actually when the return to jesus thing will happen because still those people are missing data right the data that they're missing in their mind is basically the original path of ascended mastery which we will talk about and they're also missing the data of the multidimensional deception and soul trap system, right? So without those key pieces of information, there's almost this like hyper simplistic imagery that we have in our mind. So here we want to talk about mysticism and true cosmic science, okay? True cosmic science is basically the ability to perceive and understand the multidimensional architecture of how life exists and how reality is projected from source, right? And so from the top down, you can kind of understand the mathematics of how everything exists. Now, if you're looking from the bottom up, like from the 3D, from the earth upwards, out of the veil, if you're trying to understand the universe through the veil without further understanding from outside of the veil, you're going to get stories and myths and mysticism and superstition because it's like we're looking through a foggy lens, right? And so 
this is when we start to oversimplify. And this is also when we start to black and white because we're missing the data of uh, understanding multidimensionally. And I hope that makes sense. Okay, we're gonna break those things down a little more. Um, whew, let's just take a little breath here. Yeah. So, whew. yeah, so then um, from the vantage point of my higher dimensional aspects that do understand universal field mechanics and light field genetics and things like that. It's like there cannot be true understanding of the universe and there cannot be true um, knowledge that is imparted without just an absolute love for creation. This is the foundation and the core belief or the core essence of all true angelic beings and what actually gives them access into the mysteries of creation, right? And I would say that Jesus and all of these different ascended, ascended masters, they have embodied this trajectory. And what that trajectory is, is being completely led by a pure love for creation itself from inside of our heart. And this love will pull you through myriad initiations that will test the strength and the faith of that love, right? This is a story of all ascended masters in the history of ascended masters. If you read into their story, whether it's, you know, Buddha, or Kuan Yin, or Tara, or Hathor, or um, Jesus, any of these beings, they went through a human lifetime or many, many human lifetimes where they, and maybe even other lifetimes and other star systems where um, they consistently cultivated that love for creation within themselves and showed up in their world, showed up in their life on a consistently um, in consistent devotion to a specific vibration of life, a vibration of existence, that vibration is mastery. Mastery and taking on absolute responsibility for our path and for our growth. And also just an absolute devotion to this core vibration of unconditional love, which is the basis of universal uniformity, okay, un universal connection. And so another thing that across the board is true for Ascending Masters is their devotion to the actualization of human potential because they recognize that human beings were designed and were literally created to experience ourselves as avatars. And what an avatar is, is a being that is an incarnation of source divinity which we all are, okay? So this is where it's tricky though, because in the new age community, a lot of effort and a lot of energy is spent on repeating these words, like we are divine, um, we are God. But for the most part, um, now we're getting into the territory of talking about spiritual delusion and spiritual illusions, right? So essentially a spiritual delusion is when we think a certain thing about ourselves but in actuality is different, right? So if we believe that we are a divine being and we believe that we are a fractal of the universe, but in our human life, we're actually really mean, we're short-tempered, we're not nice to people, we don't unconditionally love and forgive people in the moment, we don't act on these vibrations of mastery, then we are delusional, essentially. And this is not meant to be a negative thing. It's just a self-inquiry thing, right? It's like, are we truly living in alignment with our beliefs? Because if we're not, then we're just at the risk of existing in spiritual delusion. And I think that this is really important for us to talk about because in the New Age community, there is a lot of spiritual delusion. And again, this is not meant to be mean, it's not meant to be a bad thing even. It's just that in order for us to truly step, evolve, transcend the false matrix and you know the 3D prison system, we have to identify different ways that we are being deceived and different ways we deceive ourselves to settle 
for a path that is not exactly what is meant for us. So then the other side of that would be the illusion of separation. The illusion of separation would be like we feel like in order for us to be a divine being, we would have to completely disassociate and disidentify with our human self completely, right? So both of those viruses are actually on two, two ends of the same spectrum. Both of those things keep us from fully actualizing ourself as a human being. And I believe that the destiny of humans, which you know we are here to just witness this amazing moment in time in, in human history, um, on planet earth where we are moving into a phase when we say we're creating heaven on earth we're creating a golden age what does that really mean what does it look like how do people behave what do people look like how do people feel inside of this world well you know people are in complete awareness of themselves as and um yeah as and expanding um as source divinity itself now Whew, this is a tricky area to communicate with words because, um, again, the new age will twist this idea to basically move people into spiritual delusion. And the reason why I say that is that just because we believe something doesn't make it fully true. And just because we believe something doesn't make it automatically um, absolutely clicked in. <laughs> or physicalized. And let me explain that a little more. So I believe that these bodies have immense capabilities, right? We have heard stories of avatars from all over this planet in all moments of history, starting with the stories of Jesus, which is probably the most widely known, but also, you know, Babaji and these French priests that live off some island somewhere, these beings that have immense Cidic powers. Um, and the yogis that are in India and various, you know, mystic people from all over the world throughout history, they've all been documented to have these incredible abilities, being able to biolocate, being able to walk through walls and communicate telepathically and even teleport and all of these things. Now, I believe that these skills and these abilities are the signs or the ultimate potential of human DNA. Because when you think about the fact that human beings, if we are meant, if we're destined to be embodiments or be the fractal, be the physical materialization of pure source divinity, it means that as we come closer and closer to complete union with source, we will begin to embody qualities of God. And what are the qualities of God? Qualities of God include, you know, first of all, infinite unconditional love, infinite creativity, but then expanding into other things like omnipresence, omnipotence, omnicognizance, right? Being able to know everything in the quantum realm, being able to access all information, being able to um, be present in different spaces, being able to dematerialize and rematerialize. I mean, if you go throughout history, I know this sounds a little bit out there, but when you go and read through history books and even stories from all over the world, it's not, you know, out there. <laughs> There's a reason why there are stories written about these mystic people throughout history. I mean, what is it that allows for people to experience certain Cidic powers, right? If we... Um, I mean, me, myself, the, the current acidic power that I have been cultivating is being able to basically crawl into other people's systems to help them heal and to read, you know, their um, energy systems, you know, with their permission in the context of a session. And so this in itself would be considered acidic power. Being, ha being able to communicate telepathically, this would be considered acidic power. Well, there's actually other acidic powers as well. Um, other things are like, you know, miracle conception and things like that. And so even though from our frame of consciousness, it seems like these things are extreme and, you know, even totally out there, um, 
I feel that this is a part of a destiny that humanity is moving towards. Now, this is a very specific path, right? This path is not for everyone. It's kind of like not everyone is here to be a professional swimmer. Not everyone is here to be a professional snowboarder, right? There, But there are some people that are just born and they just know that they are meant to be on that path. And so if you're totally not resonating with this, that's totally fine. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean I'm wrong. It doesn't mean that, you know, we're all wackos. It just means that this is not for you and that's okay. And if you can still hold unconditional love for that process and just, you know, um, know that there are different people in this world and that we're all walking uh, our own paths, then we will be, you know, on a good in a good place where we can respect each other, right? So moving back to our prior conversation here. So um, so the reason why I'm bringing these pieces of context in is in this uh, process of explaining what the path of Ascended Mastery means to me. To me, it's a very deeply profound path because it's the path of actualizing our true human potential, is the path of aligning to the destiny that creation has in store for humanity itself, is the destiny that the universe has for itself, right? Because um, the universe was like, I'm going to experience myself as a individuated material form. And here we are, right? Um, I feel like human bodies are very special and very unique in that way because we are literally destined to explore ourselves as divine creator beings. Not all animals have that same intention. Source decided to create trees and experience itself as animals and all sorts of other different creatures for different purposes. And I believe that the reason why we crafted ourselves into human beings was to experience the totality of universal capabilities and universal consciousness in an individuated human form. This is why there's so many stories told about this. This is also why it's the underlying, um, this is the underlying uh, kind of um, storyline of the spiritual community as well, that we are divine creator beings, right? Whew. So this path of ascended mastery then is something that is very profound because once again, it's speaking to um, an actualization, a devotion to absolute alignment with the fulfillment of universal destiny. And again, this is one of those things where you either have that spark fervently alive in you or maybe you don't. I don't know what it feels like to not have that spark inside of me because I was literally born like this. And I believe it's because I've been on this wavelength for very, 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 very many lifetimes. This is why I didn't really watch any spiritual videos. I didn't watch any tarot videos. I didn't really even have too many crystals because my whole life for the seven, the past seven, eight years has been just responding with devotion and surrender to whatever higher self and the universe invited me into because that was what fulfilled my being and that was what brought me closer to myself. And there wasn't really any materialistic object or external person that could really bring me closer to myself. <laughs> um, and so, you know, this is why... Uh, if, you know, I do feel like part of my role here is to support people in fully trusting themselves. And this is why the self-healing and teaching meditation techniques and teaching ways that we connect to ourselves is ultimately the greatest things that we can share. Uh, because at the end of the day, you know, it's it's just about nurturing that spark inside of our being. And again, I'm not really sure what that spark is and why, you know, some people have it, right? There's a lot of people that have this um, almost like a receiver. It's like if source could send out a signal, a homing beacon, and then once, once, your, once your system touches, you know, that sacred holy place, nothing else even 
touches it. Nothing else really makes sense. Nothing else really matters. Yeah. And I think that this signal, it's kind of hard to articulate, but this signal is something that we really must expand on because it collapses all the confusion around the fluffy and the shiny things in the new age community, which it fascinates me that we call it a spiritual community, but I don't really hear about, you know, true humility and true devotion and just this immaculate innocent love for creation itself right that vibration should be the founding vibration of all things that we speak and all things that we do because that is the source from which our actions come from and so if that's not the place from which our actions come from then we have to ask ourselves where that is coming from and so this is a really easy way for us to really discern when we're in a new age community so you know if somebody has a deck of cards and they're all about ascended masters, but it's just kind of like, believe in yourself, you know, you are made of love, but there's like no substantial, like, passion. <laughs> um, it seems like it's kind of almost like a cartoon um, version of something so massively immaculate and miraculous and divine something so full of profoundness as this path of actualizing ourself um, as a fractal of this infinitely powerful force of God, um, then whew, we are, yeah, really moving into this territory where we are learning to see through uh, really the superficiality of a lot of the stuff that has been presented to us to basically satisfy our spark inside while completely keeping ourselves from accessing it. Okay. So here's the tricky thing is that I feel deeply that I have been put onto this path to share these energies with people. However, Never have, never did I start doing that until I felt um, like I got the go ahead from my higher self or until I felt like I was confident in the vibration like that I have zoned in on. And I feel that as long as, again, that the source of that motivation, I mean, people can feel this love that I have for creation because that is the source from which I am expressing and making all of my actions. It wasn't until that spark was nourished to a point inside of my being that I could basically turn on the camera and start talking from that place that I actually began to share my work publicly. Now, I feel that when people have certain false matrix programs still running, um, like, you know, needing to uh, make a profession out of things or needing to influence other people or needing to materialize things. When any of those things are still embedded in an energy system, which I spent many years consciously deprogramming, right? That it's very easy for these beings to bring all those things into a business where then they become an influencer. And again, this is where we just look into because it could be a thought, it could be an intention, it could be a positive intention even. It could be, you know, oh, I kind of understand the planetary awakening and wouldn't it be cool if I can help other people, right? This is a thought. But if that thought is the source of the creation, even though it's a kind intention, even though it is a positive desire to help, it doesn't mean that that transmission is coming from the deepest place that it could. Does that make sense? So what we're trying to say is that, again, we'll just reiterate because, you know, repetition helps us come into lucidity, that I believe that, you know, in order for us to truly be um, in alignment with our true soul's purpose, our first and foremost task is to align with the deepest core aspect of ourself. And in that place, in that core and deep, profoundly 
pristine center of ourself, we will find this immense space of cosmic love for all of life and all of creation. Especially if you're an angelic starseed, that's easy, right? It's almost like that's just like your natural state of being and everything else in this world is just fucking weird. So <laughs> you feel that energy. And then from that place, everything you do in your world becomes um, something that flows out from that place. And most of the time, it's not going to be an Instagram post. It's not going to be a tarot deck. <laughs> um, and I'm not saying that, you know, those things aren't, aren't a part of it. I'm just saying that for the most part, it's, you know, five years of complete devotion to a path of healing and defragmenting yourself. And through that process, you're going to end up with complex levels of awareness. And this is just what I've experienced. And this is why I can say, well, if a person is influencing other people's thoughts and out there as a person that is, you know, sharing profound information or information that actually affects other people's spiritual trajectories, which, by the way, it's probably I think that there's two of the most responsible, um, deeply responsible professions or things that you do with your life. And they are guiding and helping the healing of souls and guiding and supporting the transition of souls into this world, meaning you are a school teacher for children or whoever that supports children and coming to this world. The reason why those two professions are immensely important and full of responsibility is because human beings are such sacred beings. And you don't just wake up one day and say, okay, well, I'm going to go and start doing healing sessions for souls, or I'm going to start meddling with people's spiritual journeys, or, you know, I'm going to become a school teacher and just guide people in whatever way I feel like. These are journeys that directly influence other people's spiritual beingness, which are full of this profound responsibility. And so because of that spiritual responsibility, there are lots of trainings and experience that you have to go through before you take on those roles instead of just having kind intentions, right? So then that leads me to think that, okay, so, you know, when I was young, um, back in 2013, 2014, when I started to realize that I had this destiny, I realized that I had no idea, <laughs> you know, who who I was like, why should anybody listen to anything? I have to say, like, I don't know anything. And I was like, okay, well, I have to actualize at least partially fullness of myself to be able to do my job well. And so over the next seven years of immense inner healing and journeying into all of the profound complex layers of the false matrix and how it has severed me from my source divinity and moving through the process of reconnecting to myself is the place that I've received all of the context that I'm now able to support others. And so if people cannot have these conversations about these complex levels of soul trauma, then it means that they have not gone through those levels of healing. And it means that then maybe the source of their choices to become an influencer were not from that place of complete love and and reverence for creation itself which is a pretty intense place right there's a pretty it's a pretty intense place to live your life and i think that that is the ultimate um that will look different of course i mean somebody says i think there's more than one path there is absolutely more than one path and i feel like that one path the variations come from the same source right? The, the one source of the different paths is the path of devotion to actualization, to creation itself, to the love that we have for life, right? So when we decide to surrender our human desires and ego and our hopes or our personal desires, um, you know, I, I, I want a good job. I want money. I want a car. I want to travel to Bali, whatever it is. I'm not saying that once you devote yourself to this greater part of you that you don't actually get to do those things because actually, you know, sources 
ultra benevolent and these other layers of yourself actually know you better than your human self sometimes do. So when you begin to align with this higher, uh, these higher aspects of yourself back into universal totality, you actually begin to receive things in your life that fulfill you way more than what your human self might think. Okay. And so what I'm saying here is that there's really one path, but that path looks different for all people. That one path is the path of our self aligning and awakening and remembering the fullness of our own being, right? And that's not a mental construct. That's not a mental concept. If you think it, but really in your real life, there's not this deep sense of meaning, of connection, where you feel like the universe is literally moving through you all the time, then, you know, we know that there's alignment to do there. Um, and so what I'm saying then is that while there can be good intentions, things can become very tricky when that ego training has not occurred. Ego training would be to actually work with our human self our human self to align to higher virtues and to keep um, and to um, align ourselves with certain actions and habits and ways that we express our energy. Um, consciously maturing our human self and our emotional self to take more and more responsibility for ourselves in our own life. Right. And as we begin to do that, we begin to communicate more and more with this greater force that then literally moves our being. And then all the things that we create and share is coming from that place where we are feeling the love of creation itself. Right. And so then what happens is that the being begins to be drawn closer and closer to the vibration of source. And from that place is really where this magic happens. And this is where Jesus comes in, right? Because there's so many things that Jesus said back in those days that were misconstrued. I believe that a lot of the things that he said and that he left behind was actually intended for people and particularly light beings of this time here now in this um, in this reality, in this time, time, space reality, meaning the star seas and the light workers. Um, the reason I say that is because, you know, the earth was in a certain collective consciousness at that point in time. And if we look at the reason why there are all of these star seas here on the planet right now, we'll realize that, you know, what star seas are, are multidimensional beings that have access to our multidimensional selves, that have access to ourself in different locales, in different dimensionalities, right? All the way back to 12D and beyond into the source field where we remember our uni united soul's essence with source. The reason why we came all the way down to the earth is to restore certain uh, falls of consciousness that has occurred in this universe. And that is basically what Jesus was doing 2000 years ago, right? And he was trying to seed this consciousness. He was trying to seed the consciousness of source connection through simple words that people of the consciousness um, of earth back 2000 years ago could understand. Um, and we can tell by the things that he was saying that he was alluding to this path of actualization, right? What did he say? You can do greater things than me. Well, what are the things that he was doing? Why was it significant that he was materializing, um, materializing miracles and telling people that, you know, we are all <laughs> the sons and daughters of source, meaning we are all born from God. We are all here to embody God, the kingdom of heaven inside of you because or even that we were made in the image of god we're made in the image of god meaning we were made to embody the qualities of god right not in this like oh i get to control things but really the foundational essence of unconditional love infinite creativity ultimate benevolence 
Ooh. Yeah. And so what he was saying was when we begin to embody these qualities, when we begin to remember the qualities of God that we were made in the image of, that we can embody greatness. We can experience ourself wielding the power of creation in um, an aligned way where we are embodying the original intent, embodying and actualizing our human potential. Right? And so then... Here's the interesting thing is that the reason why I feel like these beings have come into my life is because of the spark inside of me, right? They didn't come to be like, oh, look at this poor little girl. She needs to be saved. Her soul is so lost. Really, that that vector had existed inside of me because I have the spark. And I'm, I'm saying I, but I'm really reflecting that part inside of all of us to say that you know, there's a potential inside of all of us to actualize our potential as a human being. And there are others who have come before us that have gone through that journey, that have embodied certain qualities of mastery already that can help us along that path. Yeah. And so if, um, whew, let's see. Um, I feel like this is where the whole like going back to Jesus thing never really like made sense to me because usually when these things happen and people go back to Jesus, like they start saying mm -hmm. things like, you know, oh, Jesus saved me and he's going to save you too. And he's the only one that can save us from Satan. And if you don't, you know, drop what you're doing and just follow him then you're going to never find yourself. And these are things that, you know, masters would never say, uh, especially Jesus, because, you know, he knows that the spark is inside of you and that, you know, he can show you what it feels like. He can show you the path towards that. But every person has to choose the actualization as a path for themselves, right? And I think that another thing that these people often say is, you know, humans, how can we be so arrogant to think that we are source? And I think that this partially is true because most people that are saying, you know, I'm God, they are saying it from the place of spiritual delusion because they've not devoted their life to actualizing the full potential of their DNA. So in that way, we've not actualized the reality that we are completely divine beings. Are all beings completely worthy of you know, sovereignty, whatever path they choose, absolutely. But um, I, I think that there's just a certain nuance to being on uh, a path um, of mastery where we step outside of this like spiritual, emotional immaturity where we feel like we're just entitled to be given whatever it is we want just for existing. We get it, you know, given whatever teachings and whatever access to, you know, higher dimensional beings and abilities just because we want them without showing any effort, without proving to ourselves that we are capable of um, handling certain responsibilities, right? Whew. And so I feel ultimately, just to wrap up this conversation here, ultimately I feel that I'm just really quite sad when I see this extreme jump because ultimately my heart desires for people to spark that desire inside of themselves to know themselves as God. And to truly know, not just think, right? Not just imagine, but to truly know. And that that path of gnosis, that path of embodiment is one of devotion. It's not one of spiritual materialism. It's not one of sensationalism. It's not one of wishful thinking. It's one of grit and, you know, actions and 
making sacrifices in our life. And by sacrifices, I just mean like choosing things that might feel hard in this now moment that serve us and our alignment in the in the long run, right? Not chasing immediate gratification, but really giving ourselves the honor that we deserve as human beings to pursue a life that is meaningful and that leads us, even if it takes 30 years, even if it takes 100 years, that leads us to um, a deeper spiral in our connection and embodiment of ourself. Yeah. <laughs> No one comes to the Father but through me. It might help to explain this for many awakening. Yeah. So, yeah, this is the thing, right? It's like, so let's just explain. The word Christ means literally divinity in form, right? This is the path of the Christic, the crystallization of human being, okay? And so this is really what we're talking about, is this path of actualizing our destiny, actualizing the potential of our DNA. So it's kind of like saying we have the potential to become an astrophysicist, but is the person that just is started high school, can they just say, I'm an astrophysicist? Well, no. Do they have the potential to become an astrophysicist? Absolutely. What would they have to do? They have to go through a series of trainings and studying and exams and all sorts of things to gain the awareness and the capabilities and the knowledge and the embodiment of being able to have that title, right? So um, I think that the, the path of, you know, crystallizing ourselves is the same. It's like we all have the potential to walk this path of ascended mastery and to um, experience the pinnacle of our potential as a human being. The pinnacle of our potential as a human being is one of embodying the infinite qualities of divinity, the infinite qualities of God, right? Um, and I think that on the one hand, it is arrogant to say that you are God if you have not put in any effort, because it's only true on one angle that you look at it. It's true that you are made of the same stuff of everything. You're made of the architecture and the fabric of the universal unity, yes. And you have the potential to experience these qualities of God that become crystallized through your devotion to the process, right? And so the term Christ means divinity materializing into form. And so this is the path that we take on our journey. And again, that path looks different for everyone. Absolutely. But the core driving force of those paths are the same. The driving force of that path is this deep devotion and love that we feel for the universe and this desire, this pure, infinite desire to experience and know ourself as ourself, capital S. <laughs> okay. And so... Ooh. Then through that lens, I feel that Christ really, uh, Jesus, landed this, um, I mean, the, the, whew, the absolutely impressive, and I mean, I don't even think impressive is the right word because it's not it's just, what do we want to say here? Immaculate, immense, the absolute gift that Christ, that Jesus, and that entire soul family landed on this planet during that time was absolutely a very clear path, a, a guiding light, right? To move through this crystallization process. There's not really anyone else on this planet in the history of this planet that, you know, has as strong of an influence on that Christic path, leading us on that Christic path than Jesus, right? In our just collective consciousness. There are other Ascended Masters that, you know, like Babaji, for example, actually work with Babaji, you know, a lot more. Um, but as far as the collective consciousness goes, you know, Jesus is a icon, right? Or an imprint. He's created this pathway out of separation, out of the illusions of separation, 
back into connection, back into this path that humanity is on of embodying and materializing ourselves, crystallizing ourselves into the potential of what we're here to be. Right? Whew. And so I think that when he says we connect to the universal unity through him, we really, we are because he has created this pathway, but really what we're doing is through, it's through the path of crystallization, it's through the devotion of this love that we feel. I mean, this is, I think, the mystery, um, underlying mystery teachings of why Jesus and Mary are often painted with them literally pointing at their heart. Yeah, it's not this fluffy, you know, love, love your neighbor. I mean, yeah, that. And when we feel a deep love and responsibility for life itself, for the universe, it pulls our being in a certain trajectory, in a certain direction. And that, that magnetic force pulls us towards our true home. Okay. And our true home is this path of actualization, of completely remembering the true divinity that we are, not in the superficial kind of fluffy way that we're often presented in the new age community. And this is the, this is the final thing is that, you know, um, when I finally experienced the true vibration of divine union, it was through, you know, the experience that I had with my own little master teacher, my daughter, Kara, when she transitioned the first time and she pulled my consciousness all the way up back to source and I merged with all that is, I felt her giggling throughout every cell of the universe. And I felt the cosmic love that was rippling through all dimensionalities of all of existence. <laughs> yeah. And I realized that that is the homing beacon, that that is the vibration that literally pulls us towards the wholeness of ourself to recognize that that is what we are and that we can begin to collapse our human self and completely ascend our humanness into that totality. And when I experienced it, I realized that that is the vibration that you know, I have, I, I feel a devotion to. Why is it that I'm, you know, working so hard and I'm, I'm trying and I'm engaged in a process of self-actualization every day? It's not because I want to fly or I want to obtain any of these city powers. It's just because there is a fervent love for creation itself inside of me. I don't know where it came from. It's just there. It's just there. And I feel it. And it pulls me through all things, all things that are difficult, all things that are shitty, no matter what it is, if I'm pulled in a certain direction and I end up a certain place because of this force, then I'm there to fully surrender and learn from it in whatever way that it's showing up for. And so when I experience those profoundly deep vibrations of divine union within, I realize that that vibration, however simple it is, it's so simple. However simple it is, it was just missing from the New Age community. Yeah? And I say, how can we have a spiritual community when the core essence of spirit is God? The core essence of our spiritual being is our love for the universe and love for creation itself. This is the core pillar of what spiritual is and that reminds me then of this meme that I often see on Instagram it would be like this guy is like so I'm spiritual you know and he's trying to pick up a girl and the girl is like demons are spirits too please be specific <laughs> right huge red flags and alarm bells went off when I looked through the new age community and I realized the reason why you know because People were so into these conferences and praying to Archangel Gabriel, whatever it is. And, you know, those vibrations, they just didn't really carry something. I didn't know at the time what they were missing, but it didn't carry the profound depth that I knew somehow deep inside. And when I finally consciously experienced that thing that I was looking for, the true devotion, the path of 
you know, cosmic love and surrender, absolute devotion to universal, universal love and human potential. I scratched my head and I said, well, there's all of these people that are engaged in spirituality, but that isn't at the foundation. That isn't at the core of spirituality itself. And I think that that is a huge realization that we're making. It's like, whew, I can't imagine Jesus showing up and not sparking that, right? I feel like every experience that I've had with Ascended Masters in my life, they would show up and I would feel their immense love for the universe so much that I just cry because I would feel the essence of my own being remember in their presence. I would remember myself fully in their presence. I will remember myself in the presence of Jesus. I will remember myself in the presence of Babaji. And I will weep because I feel the profound love that is at the core of my being that is in oneness with all that is. And so this is what's the confusing thing about these kind of, okay, I'm going back to Jesus thing. It's like, I love Jesus and I wish people would go and align with the Christic path. I wish that people would just abandon themselves completely in, in this fervence for union. I mean, so much, I feel like we have this longing for it, but we need permission or something because we might get burnt at the stake, or we might get our villages raided and our, our sacred textbooks burnt and all of those things, because there has been a war on the true Christic path in all cultures on this planet. I mean, still to this day, people in my home country are being um, murdered for these beliefs and these practices that bring us close to God. There is a war on our true spirit and nothing. I mean, that's just the truth. Right? We talk enough about that in my other videos. Okay. But whoo. anyway, I feel like this is coming back to just this core communication here, which is that I am in the process of fully landing in my heart. And my heart's desire to communicate nothing but that vibration of union and this path. And it will not be for everyone. And I have human parts that just want to be liked by people. In fact, my human self would like to be liked by everyone. And <laughs> just not, that's just not reality. So for whatever reason, you know, um, I am here and I feel called to be an oracle and an oracle is someone that's basically, you know, in new age terms is a channel, but I don't like to use the word channel because channel gives it this secularized uh, vibration where it's like you can channel a log or you can channel a demon or you can channel some other being and an oracle is someone that practices the science of channeling in a sacred space, in a contained space where only the purest vibrations of original creation are being um, translated and are being shared. I recognize my being as a sacred container and I align myself to only transmitting vibrations of original source. Whew. So this is just the beginning. I mean, I'm, I'm only 27 years old and the profoundness of this path speaks for itself. And I feel deeply honored that I get to, you know, be an instrument for this vibration, be an instrument for these transmissions, where again, I hope that through your interactions with me and the energies that I transmit, that you only remember into the fullness of yourself, that in the presence of this being, you just feel 
the immense cosmic love that is at the core of your being and the immense desire for the core of your being to know itself and to be in oneness with itself completely. That is my intention. That is why I talk out loud. And um, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up here. I'm extremely pregnant, so my battery pack is not huge. <laughs> um, I'm fired up about this path. Um, I'm just wrapping up this nine-week-long medicine container with these beautiful women inside of my class. Again, we called forth like 420 women from all over the world and these women were all consciously knowing that they were entering into the space to receive teachings from an unborn child which blew my mind and you know i'm like i could be making this up you know but so many people were sending me emails and messages about how kara was coming to them in their dreams how she was showing up in their meditations and she was teaching them and helping them heal and there are similar experiences that i have with kara on a day-to-day -day basis um in my personal life and so i i am humbled <laughs> it's not even enough to describe the uh the profoundness of this path that we're on and i'm honored to be a spokesperson for the core essence of your being to call you to spur you into complete trust inside of yourself Right? It's okay to be crazy about how sacred you are. And it's okay to feel like the new age is not giving your soul all of the depth that it knows exists inside of you. Whew. Monica says, I love that you sound like your BFS with Lisa Renee. So we're not connected in the 3D whatsoever, but I used to do grid work and I would find her notes in the ethers. And I would literally just read her notes about what she had done in that particular space. And then years later, um, you know, actually received a lot of confirmation from her. Um, so it's very interesting. We don't talk, we don't, we're not connected in 3D, but we definitely are on some other level. Um, is this channel for star seeds only? Um, I mean, our definition of star seed is a little bit different than, you know, our common understanding of star seed. My definition of star seed is someone that have, that has a spark of cosmic divine love in their being that has a conscious desire to be of service to life itself. And in that current, in our current situation, that would be to the liberation of humanity and planet earth and to the ultimate fulfillment of our human destiny. So if you are someone that feels the spark of divine love inside of you and has a desire to help, then you would fit in this description of a star seed. Um, okay. Yeah. On that note, um, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I love you guys so, so much. Um, I'm going to miss you guys when I can't do the Starcy mission supports for a little while, but I imagine I'll be back maybe in two months or something. Next week will be our final Starseed mission support. I'm going to take a deep dive through the Earth Star Academy curriculum. Um, ESA is definitely a system that is coming in to support Ascended Mastery. I have spoken about it and I have really, um, I'm just in awe really of what, um, what kind of container is coming in to be. And I had a great question in a comment section earlier who was like, why do you need to charge for something like that? Can't you just give it all away for free? I was like, I basically do. Honestly, all of the information that you could want is on my YouTube channel. I don't even believe that anyone needs me, right? Like I'm just showing up with my time and energy. And I think that it is helping a lot of people, but I'm not going to delude myself and believe that you guys need me at all. I'm here to support. I'm here to reflect. 
I'm here to say out loud things that make you say, oh my God, finally somebody said that. Like, I thought I was the only one that thinks these things in my head. I thought I was just making all this stuff up, right? I was telling someone that my day job is basically to say things that people already know so they can fully believe in themselves, right? So I'm not here to convince you of anything and you definitely do not need me at all. Um, the only thing that you need is that vector inside of your heart, that homing beacon inside of your being. As long as that homing beacon inside of your being is online and is pointed at your North Star of divine love and this desire, this fervent, pure desire to know yourself completely. I mean, it's a weird desire, right? Some people want a girlfriend with, you know, a nice body. Other people want nice cars or a great job with a 401k. And then there's just people that just want to know themselves fervently and want to embody. And so I have no words for how much of an honor it is just to be here to witness humanity move through this passage and to get to participate in it like every single day. It's awe inspiring. And I can't wait to also witness what these little miraculous star babies have to bring into this world. The first time I saw her was months before I even conceived her for the first time. And she came in with these giant angel wings and she was like, I'm coming in to help to teach you how to materialize things from thin air. I was like, oh, are you now? <laughs> okay. And she continues to tell me that she's been my soul's ascension teacher for very many lifetimes. And I can't tell you how excited I am to be continuously humbled and be awed by, you know, states of union that beings can embody that just invoke that feeling inside of yourself. Having had those experiences with these ascended masters and just how much reverence they hold, but how, how deeply they know that it's inside of you. And that's the thing. It's like no ascended master gets it twisted. They show up and they almost laugh in the face of, you know, the, the forgetfulness. They're like, oh man, it seems like you really are in amnesia. Like you really forgot. <laughs> oh man, you really forgot, you know, that you're, what the, the you really forgot the truth that's inside. Ooh, and that's really the signal that we have to send is that that's the only signal that we were we are de devoted to um, refining over time. I have dreams that one day, you know, we'll be able to sing these songs and tens of thousands of people will just hear the signal and they'll just remember and they'll just wake up. We think that that's going to happen. And we know that that can only happen if we completely devote ourselves to the embodiment of that vibration so strongly that everything in our wake will just be touched by it and awaken. Whew. And I feel that this is a way that we can shift. <laughs> and wake up the whole world. I mean, it's like we can make reels. <laughs> I'm definitely going to learn how to make reels. Don't get it. You know, I, I'm going to learn how to make reels. But <laughs> I think that the even more important application would be to refine the signal until it's just undeniably felt. And um, there's just a really deep desire for beings to be touched by the truth of divine love. I mean, you ever walk around outside or you go on a bus and you see how sad people are and you know that if you could just poke them or if you could just give them a hug and if they could just have a spark of awareness of how loved they truly are and how divine and how worthy of life and how beautiful that, you know, that that spark would just evaporate all of the sadness that they're carrying. 
And when you have the awareness that that spark is inside of them, it's like, how do we just touch that spark? And I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed with that discovery. I am obsessed with figuring out how to touch that spark inside of people because I feel this world is starving for our birthright, our birthright of our connection with divine love itself as the core essence of our being. And I think that that's beautiful. Does Issa have a private group chat for talking to other students? We actually have our own little um, Facebook-like platform on the website. So you can post, you can add friends, you can connect with others. We can make groups for different locations so you can meet up with people that are in your local area. And I do do live Q&A and live healings and live trainings inside of ESA as well. So. Anyway, thanks for hearing me ramble. I hope that it's supportive. I love you so very much. We're going to see you next week. And I'm going to miss you guys when I go on maternity leave, but I dearly need it. I'm starting to cocoon and cave into my body and into my space. And it's bringing me a lot of delight and joy to be able to go as far in as I possibly can. And I can't wait to bring the gifts that that has back out into this world. But I will see you guys next week angels. Bye for now.